Uh, welcome to today's lecture on fundamentals of industrial oil hydraulics and pneumatics. Now, uh, this is uh, module 2 and today's lecture number is 6 and we shall discuss uh, some basis for calculating hydraulic systems. Now, in this lecture what will be discussed you may find that I am discussing about some formula how to calculate this. Sometimes there is no derivation for that, that means there is not much scope of presenting the derivations here. So, this is basically what I am going to deliver today that you have to keep aside while you are doing um, studying any hydraulics or doing some hydraulic calculation etcetera. Okay. Now, also uh, before going into that what I have covered in 5 lectures may be some portion will be uh, repeated here. <coughs> now, with that I would like to tell you what is uh, hydraulics and pneumatics more generally known as fluid power. We call this subject as fluid power which is basically should be fluid drive and control. Now, what it is? Now, let us consider an uh, actuator you must have seen that uh, actuator in that actuator it is basically a cylinder and a piston and there is a load this load is to be uh, moved by this actuation system. Now, then what we need we need to allow some fluid to go inside so that it can lift the load and that fluid have enough pressure so that this pressure into this area should be equal to the load applied load or just slightly above that. Now, for that what we will think first of all there we will think of a energy source which can, which can deliver the fluid into this system. So, we are considering a pump. Okay. Now, then <coughs> this pump we can directly uh, send connect this pump output to this. So, this will pump the oil inside and it will go up, but the question is that next moment we have to bring down the piston for the next assignment. In that case definitely this oil we have to allow to some other path we cannot return this oil through this pump. So, now we will think of some arrangement by which we can do that. Now, this is a valve it is called 4 by 3 directional control valve I will explain a little bit how it works, but after that what we would do, do we can now connect this from there one port to the head side and other connection to the rod end side. Okay. Then next this would work, but we need a reservoir from where the oil is taken. We need also the filtration of that oil because we can part the oil inside the reservoir after filtration, but each and every stroke this rod end is being exposed to atmosphere where it may catch the dart which will go inside and that oil will be returned to this tank and then it needs filtration further filtration. Okay. So, this is called strainer. Now, next we need a motor to drive this pump also we need a safety valve which is pressure relief valve. What is safety valve? Suppose this gets struck or the load is excess load in that case definitely pressure will be higher than the system pressure we have considered. In that case if we do not allow this oil to bypass there may be accident because it will cause bursting of the hose and etcetera. So, we need a valve which is called pressure relief valve when the pressure exceeds the system pressure we have set the oil will automatically go out through this valve to the reservoir. So, this is the basic system and if we 
further consider this valve this is why we call 4 by 3 directional control valve because there are 4 ports 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, this port is for usually you will find a P is written here P does not mean the pump rather it is pressure port the pressurized oil will enter through this. Now, then it either can go this directions or it can go this direction this oil. How if we connect if we connect this position then it will go to the head side of this actuator and the oil from the other end will go to the tank. If we connect this side then the oil will go to the rod end side and oil from the head side will go to the reservoir. Now, so what we find here there are three position. So, this three is written here and there are four ports. So, we write four here. So, we simply call it four by three directional control valve, but apart from that there are many other which we should attach with this uh, title because say this if you look into this portion what it is it is normally closed when it is in this position that is neutral position the all ports are closed that means where whatever the oil is inside that will be there the load will be in this position. So, this is completely closed center it is called closed central valve along with that also this might be operated by hydraulic might be operated manually might be operated by pneumatic or solenoid actuators many possibilities are there according to that we can add more specification with that. Anyway, this uh, I think all you know uh, the symbols these are the symbols used for uh, hydraulic components. Suppose if this pump is hydraulic pump okay. and uh, if it is a pneumatic pump you can use the similar symbol only in case of pneumatic this triangle is not filled it is a this just three lines are there inside it will be white or blank. So, that will that indicates pneumatic. Similarly, pneumatic valves will be have more or less similar looking, but they have some special symbols attached to that by which we can understand this is pneumatic valve. But here what I have drawn are hydraulic components this is a pressure relief valve these symbols um, those who do not know about the much about the symbols um, I shall give you them the notes from which you can find uh, the symbols. Okay. Now, we shall move into the next uh, now in industrial oil hydraulics as shown fluid power systems use fluids to transmit power and motion both liquids and gases are called fluids hence both these types of fluids are used in fluid power technology. Under liquids mostly mineral oil with suitable additives are used instead of plain water which however, however is used also in some cases. Nowadays you will find that um, there are in many systems we prefer water and with some additives that water also uh, give very good performance and uh, particularly uh, where we there is a problem of fire hazards it is better to go for uh, not to go for mineral oils. So, water is now used earlier the problem with water was that first thing it was uh, the rust was one problem the additives were not uh, invented or not discovered in that way to make the water usable for fluid power systems. Under gases usually atmospheric air is used after cleaning it suitably. However, synthetic fluids with additives and other gases are also used for specific purposes such as fire resistance or the fluid itself is the product for example, milk 
in that case you may find that fluid power systems are there, uh, but uh, the milk itself is the medium. That is the state of art behind those two modern technologies of industrial oil hydraulics and pneumatics. Now, briefly historical background is that fluid power technology in its earliest form mostly took advantage of motion of fluids or scientifically speaking of its kinetic energy. Remember these things kinetic energy, water current to drive water wheels, hydroelectric power generations for example, wind energy was utilized in sailing boats. Those are based on hydrokinetic or hydrodynamic principles. We call them also hydraulic machines, but the fluid power is really different from uh, that hydrokinetic or hydrodynamic principles. Here, what we need the hydrostatic behavior of the fluids. But while hydraulics under the banner fluid power means the pressure energy of the fluids rather than its velocity is the drive force or in other words hydrostatic energy. Therefore, fluid power with oil hydraulics even called as hydrostatic transmission of power we call hydrostatic transmission that is we use this uh, fluid maybe you can if it is incompressible fluid particularly oil hydraulics we consider a column of the fluid in a conduit as a solid body which is just transmitting force from one side to other side. Oil hydraulic actuators pumps and motors are termed as positive displacement units what is uh, the difference between the positive displacement units and which are hydrokinetic. Suppose if you think of a um, any impeller um, uh, which is say the water pump, the, then in that case what is done there this impeller uh, rotates and then the fluid velocity is generated and that also creates an suction head and then due to this velocity hydrokinetic energy fluid with some pressure is delivered at the output end. In case of hydrostatic machines which is also called positive displacement units, the fluid instead of adding this kinetic energy the fluid is trapped in a volume. Then this is pushed out in the other end to give the pressure and also the velocity. So, this means that or in other words we should say the pump in hydrostatic units does not pump the pressure, it pumps the fluid and pressure is experienced by the load. And uh, therefore, in positive displacement units you will find that if you calculate the geometric displacement that means volume displaced per revolution we call it swept volume. Okay. So, it is having a swept volume of course, we have to later in real calculation we have to add how much loss is there leakage and other losses. Anyway, so, you should remember this term the positive displacement unit and also many times you will use that hydrostatic transmission. Pneumatics is also put under the same banner when pressurized air and gas works at constant pressure, temperature and volume to transmit power. Now, pneumatic uh, in a sense pneumatic is not uh, the incompressible fluid, so it is compressible. So, in that case if you think from the um, compressor the when the energy the air is being stored in compressor and then when from compressor to it is being pumped into an actuator at that condition there will be variation and pressure and variation of volume and other things. But 
at a constant pressure and temperature you will find that is also behaving like a solid unit and that is why it also um, is considered under fluid power. Hmm. And of course, the um, applications are different normally pneumatics are used for light load and uh, uh, it, it has advantage that this air is available in plenty. So, there may be a general uh, pneumatic system storage system from where we can use this uh, air. Okay. Now, <coughs> another things that uh, Pascal's law is 1960 uh, sorry 1650 that time uh, when this, this law was uh, first invented then perhaps people was thinking of using this pressure energy for transmitting power. Then Bernoulli in 1750 who uh, first uh, proposed the law of conservation of energy and then perhaps that it is the theory part of the fluid power started developing and then 1800 Brahma first invented the leather cuff and before that people were trying to use a press, but it was not successful because of the problem of leakage and first uh, he invented the leather cuff which and then the um, press was started working. Of course, that time the mainly the fluid means was water. Now, if we think in, in that way power transmission by water, uh, so it is in 1800 that time it was utilizing and gradually it was decreased and then perhaps the oil hydraulics and pneumatics came and if we look year wise after about 100 years the first idea of alternating flow hydraulics was uh, uh, proposed by Constantinesco, but it was not that popular what the hydraulic system the fluid power system we use that is basically um, DC system direct and all the fluids from different actually you will find that for smooth output multiple chamber pumps are there. Now, all the flow are mixed and then it is transmitted in case of alternating flow it is not like that each and every chamber will move another chamber in the motor end side, but that was not that much popular. But anyway, we if we look into this history, then 1920 um, the high pressure vane pump was invented and then, then in 1930 not much only uh, 80 years back first the seal was invented synthetic rubber seal. The leather cuff was invented in 1800 after 130 years the good seal was used and then onwards only the fluid power became very popular. However, in the meantime I think uh, electro hydraulic servo valve introduced in 1940-1945, but by this time when this uh, this period 1920-1940 then the, there was a tremendous growth of electrical machines also I think. Then um, uh, the fluid power I, I, I mean there was a uh, had, had to take back foot, but again uh, during the second world war for different function the fluid power. Uh, became the more useful, uh, but there was not much theory in 1950 however, that MIT the Massachusetts Institute of Technology they there uh, three persons mainly they uh, wrote a very good book fluid power and control and they tried to theorize all the applications of fluid power etcetera. Now, if you then 19 after 1950 to say 1975 uh, there were many research on fluid power and it was growing and uh, 
particularly the electrohydraulic systems and electrohydraulic servo valves and gradually nowadays what we find that uh, what, what, what are the subject is called mechatronics that is mechanical hydraulic valves along with the electronics. So, this is a mixed subject, it is very difficult to be specialized on such uh, equipment for a one person, because if you are very strong in hydraulics, you may not be very strong in electronics and other things. So, this must be a steam work, but always every what you will find the what the newest valve now or any equipment now after maybe one year you will find something has new, new something new has developed and you have to replace that. Okay. So, now if we look into this the 2000 rapid growth in electronics and manufacturing technology, now what is there the nanotechnology with which you will find that. This is again they are considering fluidics which I have not yet mentioned, the fluidics is another part of fluid drive. So, now the fluidics is coming up particularly nano fluidics. Also the nanotechnology is being used for fluid power to make very small actuator etcetera, pump and other I cannot really imagine of that. Anyway, um, then also I, I cannot cover uh, about the symbols construction how they are made but it will be available it is in second lecture it was given. So, this you can see this this is the repetition of the first slides you can see how the symbols are used to make a circuit because if you plan to do something by a fluid power you will find that um, in this case you have to select some components and that you can connect to assembly a system which will work. In case of mechanical machines, sometimes of course there is also sub assembly and other things, but you may find say for example a in a in a in a car the power transmission engine to um, wheel so, there is a uh, connection which um, I mean this continu continuity is there and this is a you cannot place in any direction you have to follow particular direction. In case of fluid power due to the um, due to the advantage of using the pipes and hose, if you use flexible hose you can place this one in any directions whereas, your power source is one place and the valve is another place like that. But anyway to design such a system first of all you have to draw a circuit like an electrical systems. Now to draw the circuits you cannot draw the original components there because these are very difficult to draw and every time you can put and they are not of the same shape. However, if you follow these symbols it is very easy to do that, that, that is why we should have idea about the symbols. It is very difficult to remember all such symbols and you should not try for that, but if you just go through the symbols few times you will have an idea that what is what and then you can looking into the symbols you can understand what it is. Now, actual looking say this is not again photographic view what is that again schematic some um, 3D view we have developed as you see look into this this is uh, the actuator this will something look like this it may be different also and then this is the direction control valve and this is our pump and this is the pressure relief valve and this is the reservoir, but what is not shown here so this is <coughs> the return line filter and you can see many things in this valve of course, this is not the part of the hydraulic system this is one to sometimes in some system these are used first this has two function one is that you can part the oil into the tank the reservoir or you can replace this oil or you can filter this oil. Okay. So, just take this oil out filter it and again send it back to the tank. So, this is used and this perhaps another valve is there uh, it is not known, but it a system will look like this. 
but it is not always you can draw the system like this. So, better to follow the circuit diagram and the symbols. Okay. Now, some properties of the fluid already we have thus discussed in earlier lectures, but here I will just repeat viscosity means that a dy dynamic viscosity mu in general. Okay. We call it dynamic viscosity. What it is? It is resistance to motion offered by the fluid layer on which a body is moving. Okay. Now, why we, I am talking about the viscosity? This is one uh, the parameter which is very important uh, to have the performance of uh, the hydraulic systems. We should use such an fluid for which the mu is uh, not varying much within a relatively wide temperature range or pressure range. Otherwise, there will be variation in performance and we cannot um, fulfill our requirements. So, this is um, an important factor. A resistance experienced by the fluid in laminar flow means flow in laminar or layers within a conduit say between two parallel plates. The force required to push a plate on another plate with fluid layer in between increases with the decrease in gap between plates or in other words the shear stress is the area of the fluid layer in touch with the plate is related to velocity of velocity the gradient which is. So, in that way viscosity is defined as mu is equal to f by a where f is the force a is on which though we are considering a plate on which the fluid is in contact b is the velocity h is the gap. So, or shear stress more generally is expressed as f by a is equal to mu into d u by d y. So, this is um, in the earlier lecture I have explained uh, more details how the uh, viscosity is expressed. However, one uh, important thing is that viscosity index not only we mention while we are selecting any fluid not only we should know about the what is the viscosity but we should know is the viscosity index also. On that it depends uh, for what should be the range. You may find viscosity of an oil is very good, but it is ha having poor viscosity index. This means that this oil um, can be used within a, a short range of the temperature, but for if we if we see that temperature is not uh, very big, it is small, in that case we can go for such an oil for which perhaps the viscosity index is poor. But if we find that we have to uh, use the same oil for wide temperature range, we should go for very good viscosity index and that is you can uh, from this graph. Say this is the sample oil which we are using and this is um, this basically based on uh, that in USA uh, in Pennsylvania paraffinic is one oil which is having the low viscosity index and Texas naphtha is having the sorry this is highest and this is the lowest viscosity index and usually oil found out is in between and we will try to have such an oil, but this problem of this using this oil is somewhere else. So, anyway by adding additives we can improve this viscosity index as well as uh, the other properties also. Now, again another few laws we should follow. So, this is basically as you 
no this is the Bernoulli's equations. So, if we consider two section uh, in a, any flue con uh, this conduit then uh, say u is the energy rho is the uh, specific gravity etcetera v 1 is the velocity a 1 is the area p 1 is the pressure z 1 is the height w is the weight flow rate of the fluid etcetera at one section and other sections then uh, we can use this equation for Newtonian fluid and in fluid power analysis mostly we follow Newtonian fluid. Okay. Now, frictionless flow through nozzles and orifice uh, uh, another important factor we should know that uh, when the flow is through an orifice what will be the equations for the pressure because this is important in, in the fluid power uh, each and every equipment you will find there are several orifices through which the through which flow occurs. Now, for such orifice analysis definitely only hydrostatic analysis will not do we have to consider the hydrokinetic everything. So, that we must consider a separate uh, analysis which we need for the detailed analysis of the valve and so to say any equipment where is the orifice flows are there. So, for that we will find one equation which is very important, but in most of the overall system design sometimes we do not need, need to go for some orifice analysis. Now, these are the equations I guess it is known. So, we will go through this very quickly. So, this is one very important equations that velocity this point will be 2 by rho p 1 and p 2 the pressure uh, is upstream and downstream and the final equations in that way if you go to that the most useful equations is this one. This is the flow rate through any valve where A 0 is the area at the uh, it, it is area of the orifice this area is the area of the orifice here and p 1 is the pressure at upstream and downstream and normally this pressure may be not normally some cases you will find this pressure is 0. So, we can write if we know the upstream pressure then this velocity will be 2 by rho into p 1 and this is multiplied by a factor C D and this uh, fluid power equipments are designed in such a way mostly you will find that this C D value is very close to 0.6 that you can remember. If this value fluid power cal calculations any calculation if this if you face this equation and if you find there is no C D is given you may consider it will be 0.6. Now, where is the area of the orifice and C D, C D is called coefficient of discharge and again it has other two components uh, velocity co coefficients and area coefficients. Now, for the viscous flow through this uh, capillary passage one important another important factor is there this is Reynolds number where uh, the kinematic viscosity is given by mu by rho and u is the velocity of, of the fluid in the conduit and d this is most important d is the hydraulic diameter. This diameter is not the diameter of the conduit it is usually taken as 4 into flow section area. The flow section area may be anything one is that circular is most common, but it may be rectangular, it may be square, it may be half semi circular etcetera etcetera. But if you know that area that 4 into that area divided by flow section perimeter that means, that you, you have to measure the perimeter of the orifice or conduit. So, to say in this conduit and then you will get a an unit which is called hydraulic diameter. 
usually fluid flows in oil hydraulics have the reduced Reynolds number much less than 1. Uh, this means that in fluid power system we follow another uh, Reynolds number which is called reduced Reynolds number and it is given by these equations. Hmm. H is the height of the gap between the capillary passage. Hmm. Say if you have considered two plates, so height uh, gap is designated by H and L is the length. If you find the plate is slightly inclined that H is varying, you can take the average H there to calculate the Reynolds number. Now, we shall go into some basic calculations which uh, looking into the time perhaps we will not be able to cover much, but I will give you some idea and possibly the other we will shall discuss in the next lecture. Now, to design a hydraulic system it is normally necessary to determine the following four quantities. One is that quantity of energy in the system, two the total pressure drop in the system, three total leakage drop in the system and total heat development in the system. This to know accurately the performance of a system we should analyze this. Usually you will find that any system, any transmission system while we are thinking of then efficiency you should look into efficiency because that is most important. Unfortunately, fluid power system is has low efficiency than pure mechanical or even electrical systems. The question is that why we still use the fluid power? It has many other advantages on the other hand because particularly you can handle a huge load with a small um, overall system size because um, if you just think of a fan uh, what we use in the room you will find that is usually 60 to 80 watt then if you look into this if you just consider the um, rotor portion you will find the usually diameter is 150 say 150 millimeter 15 centimeter and height is about 50 centimeter. Now, a hydraulic motor of that size can deliver may be 20 kilo watt where the fan electric fan is only 100 watt it the hydraulic motor of same size envelope size can deliver 20 kilo watt. So, that is why you will find in many places it is very convenient to use a system. Although overall if we consider the reservoir and etcetera that will be of huge size. Anyway, we should calculate all such things you know, for to predict the performance of a fluid power system. In what follows these four quantities will be determined to the considerable simplified example which I am showing now. Now, what I have considered the same a conduit here uh, we can add some work also we can add some heat energy now this this means that maybe energy is going in also sometimes energy is going out in the form of heat now usually what we will write the equation following the Bernoulli's equations we will write this equation but there are losses in reality there are no liquids which are not subjected to losses and therefore another term has to be added now this adding this we will get that loss we have to add this loss and then it becomes a constant in the theoretical or technical system the dimensions E is kg centimeter per units per mass that I think you know that SI units it will be a, a slightly different. In this conjunction loss always means development of heat this main major losses. If the first three terms of the equations are studied it is seen that the energy in a liquid 
originates part, partly from the static pressure that is P by rho of the oil and partly from the oil velocity that V square by 2 which this energy in form of energy we have to consider V square by 2 and partly from the geometric height G H. Okay. So, normally in case of fluid power systems this G H part can be neglected. Within hydraulics there are partly hydrostatic and partly hydrokinetic systems. If we consider a fluid power system usually you will find inside the pump performance there is some part is hydrokinetic and once it is hydrokinetic means you have to consider the kinetic energy of the fluid that is velocity due to the velocity of what is the energy of the fluid. On the other hand when we will reach into the hydrostatic parts we can neglect that part we will consider only the pressure force there. The hydrokinetic systems in which much of the energy originates from the oil velocity will not be dealt here. Okay. The, the two midmost terms that P square by 2 and G H will normally be insignificant relative to the first part P by rho in hydrostatic systems. This means that I would like to mention here specifically when you are going to inside the performance of a valve or any equipment say pump etcetera this will be the main but this you cannot neglect but outside this that when you are coming to the system and conduit you can neglect this part you can consider only this part but no here this part will be significant in case of fluid power. Now, the following formula is suitable for uh, the rapidly determining the quantity of energy in oil flow who the capacity Q and the pressure is I think this is due to mismatch this is a delta delta P this is differential pressure delta P. So, we can consider omega T this is while we are calculating the power we consider the ang angular speed and the torque that is equivalent to Q into P. This earlier, earlier lecture we have learned it, but if you just um, consider the um, unit then omega is rad per second and torque is Newton meter SI system. So, it is Newton meter per second which gives us what this power and if you think of the flow Q is meter cube per second and pressure is Newton per meter square again it is also giving Newton meter per second. So, we can calculate suppose there is a this is an electric motor we can calculate an omega T there and for the pump the power we can calculate in this way. However, there is a loss if we consider then we have to multiply with a efficiency factor in between. To calculate the velocity in different cross sections of the system the equation of continuity is used which with good approximation that, that uh, rho 1 is equal to rho 2 that density will be same specific weight will be same and everywhere. So, we can write here that means we have considered many things inside it, but simply we can write u 1 v 1 is equal to a 2 v 2 whatever the area the velocity will increase simply. Hmm. So, this is the continuity equations and then now, if you would like to calculate the energy the heat content being disregarded we if we disregard that part the energy per unit mass at the cross section a a 1 we can calculate in this way. Now, we have for a cal this system what we have considered say pressure is usually 
in fluid power still you will find the people use the bar. If you uh, go to any industry or mostly you will find this bar particularly if you go to the western countries they, are, they still you would say this is pressure is in bar. Whereas, uh, in uh, India perhaps or uh, those who are following MK system they used to say that uh, kg per centimeter square. Of course, if you go to the um, European countries they were using PSI, hmm. but SI units now which is become popular and we are all we are trying to um, consider the SI units only. In that case Pascal, but Pascal is uh, you see this is a um, I mean numerically it is a big value. So, that is why normally we express the pressure as mega Pascal and roughly it is 100 bar is equal to 10 mega Pascal. What is the pressure in bar or kg per centimeter square divide by 10 that will give you mega Pascals and if you would like to convert into the Pascals what you have to do? You have to multiply with 10 to the power 6. Okay. Now, here we have considered 10 mega Pascals also I would like to say that um, um, 1000 psi you can note it down 1000 psi is equal to uh, 7 mega Pascal 1000 psi is equal to 7 mega Pascal or 70 bar or 70 kg per centimeter square this is the uh, very close value not exact value to get the exact value you have to go through the conversions but if the pressure somewhere is given particularly when you are writing the paper in examinations if it is given in PSI if you would like to con convert into SI units simply use 1000 PSI is equal to 7 mega Pascal. Now, Q is 30 liter per minute if you convert it it will become 5 into 10 to the power minus 4 meter cube per second which is in SI units. Now, uh, the specific weight is 830 kg per meter cube that is for hydraulic oil. Normally, mineral based oil is um, within 800 to 850 kg per meter cube, but this is a long range I have mentioned this is with some heavy additives 850 kg per meter cube and maybe 800 is without any additives and oil of a particular um, place. Normally, if you get take the mineral oils perhaps 830 kg per meter cube is the weight of that and it is lighter than water for water it is 1000 kg per meter cube. Okay. Now, viscosity this is of course, using the what the oil you are using on that it will be specified by the manufacturers, but it is 0 0.340 Pascal second at 50 degree centigrade for this value we have a, I mean for this problem we have taken 0 0.340 Pascal second at 50 degree centigrade. Now, usually what the oil you are using with that a chart will be available where it is given say normally operating temperature for such hydraulic oil usually the maximum temperature is 75 degree centigrade not more than that and uh, in, in coal country for coal start oil temperature may be less, but when it starts when it start working usually you will find that oil temperature will increase because of the friction and other things and may be 30 for 40 degree centigrade um, the oil temperature inside it even if 
the ambient temperature may be 0 degree. Whereas, in India when the ambient temperature itself becomes 50 degree centigrade at some places 45 degree centigrade at least in summer hot summer then oil temperature may go up to 75 degree centigrade, but uh, temperature more than that um, I would say uh, is not allowable for the oil. So, what we what we need to do normally if the temperature is higher than of that range then we must use a cooler and to avoid the cold start problem in cold country you may need heater also. Okay. And um, in case uh, that very precision operations say fluid bar is being used for robots and some precision machines or machine tools in that case sometimes you will find both cooler and heater is used. Anyway while you are calculating something for the performance you have to be careful of this value because this varies with temperature and if you know the oil you should you need a chart for that to estimate actual mu. Now uh, this V velocity in this case it will come 64 meter per second the A is not given but this value is given. Now on that basis if you would like to use uh, I would like to estimate this value then you can see this just we have calculated substituting the values and it has come uh, this meter square per second square and then the energy per second now this in form of power we can calculate this and then it becomes 5025 watt. So, about 5 kilowatt. Now, if we calculate in other way that you know we know this uh, Q and P and in that way it is 5000 watt. Okay. Now, this difference is due to that we have considered the other details factor for calculating this one energy that way. So, we find that is 25 watt difference of 25.65 watt, okay. but that if we calculate very accurately both this difference should not be there. So, this is basic calculation what you need to do for fluid power. Now, when oil is flowing through a tube the pressure drops in the direction of flow is to be calculated. This pressure drop always depends on the oil velocity, tube length and tube diameter. Furthermore, any alteration of the velocity will result in substantial pressure drop. Such alternatives of velocity occur in for example, tube bends, valves and with any uh, alterations of cross sections and we need to if we really would like to calculate some pressure drop we have to consider each and every part particularly when you are analyzing a valve. In case of servo valve you may find sometimes the 50 percent pressure drop is there to control the flow. As the size of the pressure drop varies much according to the weather, uh, whether the flow is laminar often called viscous or turbulent it is necessary first to determine the kind of flow what kind of flow is there. Now for that first of all we should consider the Reynolds number. So, this already we have learned so I am skipping this and then uh, it is like that if for round sorry this this is wrong spelling mistake is there. Uh, round plane tube uh, if this uh, Reynolds number exceeds 2300 the flow is said to be turbulent. Now, it is you see this is from the um, experimental value experimentally. So, if we calculate if what we know this tube dimensions and velocity etcetera from there 
we can calculate what is the Reynolds number if it exceeds then we should consider a turbulent. Normally in fluid tower in normal flow that means when it is flowing through the conduits this is not turbulent, but usually through an orifice the flow is mostly turbulent and there it is again very difficult to calculate the Reynolds number. However, by changing the orifice shape we can reduce the Reynolds number and we can make it laminar, but there is one thing is there in many cases for the best response it is better to be the turbulent flow not the laminar flow particularly in valve. Okay. Now, uh, Reynolds number is less than um, 1200 the flow is called laminar. Now, then there is a question that if it is between 1200 and 2300 what we should consider. Now, there I would say depending on the other factors it can be decided whether the flow is laminar or turbulent within this, that range. So, but we are not going through such details here. The interval is a transition area which should rather be avoided when the tube dimension for systems of a more complicated nature are to be determined. This means that if possible then fluid power applications try to avoid such Reynolds number. Okay. If the liquid flows through slots or similar opening the transition from laminar to turbulent flow takes play at a lower Reynolds number. For leakage flow in pumps and motors the most recent experience shows further that in spite of very low RE the flow will often be a mixture of turbulent and laminar actually in valve flow it is like that. To calculate pressure drops and leakage losses in such cases it is necessary to calculate it a losses for each kind of flow separately and add them afterwards we have to superimpose. Now with flow through round plane tubes the pressure drop is given by this equation. Now the, this is derived and sometimes might be semi empirical, but what I, I would say that you need, need not remember all such formulas, but this formula should be assigned you when you are calculating a fluid power system. Uh, now, this is again if you in terms of if you this velocity if you convert into flow rate then this equation will be converted into this. Here the area is equal to pi d square by 4 this is very simple L is the length of the tube where you can see this what are the parameters we have considered here. Next, uh, the flow through the annular slots, the pressure drop is now when it becomes a slot, then delta is the height, and uh, this is a annular slot. In that case, we use a, this is a factor is multiplied with this, where E is the eccentricity. This annular slot means you can say that two circles are there, hmm, but there is some eccentricity. So, due to that this change will be there and this eccentricity if it is 0 then this is L by L this factor is 1. Okay. Again if it is we if we consider the D is the diameter is it mean diameter uh, mean diameter and delta is the slot height you just consider two circles and then delta is the radial uh, height of the slots and D is the mean diameter and T is the eccentricity. So, Q is given by this one and other uh, specification that we consider earlier. 
Now, it should be noted that this eccentricity 1 the pressure drop is 2.6 times if the eccentricity is 0. With flow through a plane slots the pressure drop is now we have considered a slot in that case this is the slot height and then um, in terms of flow rate this equation is converted into that and B is the slot width in meter and Q is given by this that means here the area is B into delta this is the slot height this is the width B is the velocity of the fluid and then uh, we need to calculate a factor uh, the lambda is inserted in the Poiseuille's formula where uh, this lambda is 64 by the Reynolds number and then this can be further derived in that way and then this pressure drop is given by this equation. We have introduced this factor to get the realistic value. Okay. Now, when divided by this specific uh, by the specific gravity the result is and this is a another famous formula developed by a scientist Darkis and he expressed this factor is H f where H f is del p by gamma which is expressed in meter okay, and other dimensions as it is. Now, this lambda also very often uh, is replaced by f can be determined when re number that Reynolds number has been calculated because we can use this formula and then to calculate the pressure drop with turbulent flow through a tube uh, which of course we should not apply for the nozzle the empirical formula is to be used now it is del p is equal to lambda l by d b square by 2 into rho that means we have to use this lambda factor there now obviously if we use with in terms of flow rate then this is converted because this flow rate by area gives this velocity The pressure drop can be expressed in the same way whether it is a question of laminar or turbulent flow uh, the tube friction coefficient lambda is however, very different in two um, instances which results in the previously mentioned difference in pressure drop. That means, we this value again it changes with uh, whether turbulent or laminar. Okay. In the case of turbulent flow lambda depends partly on the number and partly on the relative roughness in the tube. The relative roughness is uh, del by d where d is the diameter and del is the roughness which depends on the tube quality. Okay. When the Reynolds number and the relative roughness have been calculated the length is found in a table or by means of a curve for lambda as a function of Reynolds number and with the relative roughness as parameters. If mean roughness is used lambda can be fixed at 0.3164 into Reynolds number to the power minus 1 by 4. It should be noted that the pressure drop with laminar flow is del p plus k 1 into v is equal to k 1 plus v while the pressure drop with turbulent flow is del p into k 2 into v square. And thus the result is obtained by fixing lambda at lambda is equal to k 3 by v minus 1 to the power 1 and lambda is equal to k 4 into velocity to the power minus 1 by 4 respectively for the turbulent and laminar flow etcetera. Okay. So, these um, I am showing this formula these are only useful we are not derived that and uh, also that while we are considering this Reynolds number to calculate that particularly we have to calculate the hydraulic diameter 
in that case the R p um, is used which is um, cross sectional area of the tube divided by sur circumference of the tube. Okay. Say in, in case of round circular one this comes d by 4, okay. but if it is uh, the rectangular you will find of the ratio of the length say for example, where the width is double the um, height it will be different from other rectangular size it will not be same ok. So, that is important. Now, the pressure drop for a tube with length L and an arbitrary cross section with hydraulic radius R p is thus this is expressed the same in this form. It should be noted that the pressure drop is only the drop in the tube while the pressure drops at the tube ends are determined another way as it will be described next. Now, this is uh, I would say this all the pressure drops and other things this is along the length, but uh, we have to determine the pressure drop at the ends separately which is given by these equations. This is only the orifice equations as you find. So, this is the modified form of that. So, this is the pressure drop we calculate in this way and the coefficient of um, discharge say fixed at good approximation 0.6 is actually there is a curve which is called von Mises curve from there it is found and for the fluid part here of course, it is suggested that 0 0.66, but normally you will find 0 0.62, 0 0.64 are used. As previously men mentioned, veins um, then branchings of expansion, narrowing the valves will also cause pressure drop to occur. These pressure drops cannot be calculated on the basis of the formula already mentioned. These we have to calculate separately and there we introduce a new factor which is lambda into L by 2. Say while we are this the special cases means veins or it is being narrowing, branching etcetera, we have to consider another factor. But uh, with this factor uh, usually suppose if you calculate uh, this value and the velocity is there and from there you can calculate what will be the pressure drop. And uh, mm, this is of course, not the end there are many other points sometimes we will uh, discuss may be in the next lecture or in that tutorial section. So, thank you very much for listening.